Back in the 1960s, Ivan France conducted a meticulously controlled study that would shed light on what actually happens when people cut out saturated fats and eat polyunsaturated vegetable fats instead. The study, which would be called the Minnesota Coronary Survey, took years to set up and had more than 9,000 research subjects. Since people were living in institutions, they could control exactly what the people ate. To this day, it stands as one of the most rigorous diet trials ever conducted. So what does the Minnesota study show? The patients on the vegetable oil diet did end up with lower cholesterol than the people who ate food cooked with animal fats. But the vegetable oil people didn't live longer. That study generated sensational headlines. The data for it was never published, and it was found in a basement five decades later, and it seemed to overturn the prevailing theory about fats. The lead scientist for that study worked at the University of Minnesota with one of the most famous nutrition scientists ever, Ansel Keys, the man credited with popularizing the Mediterranean diet and associating saturated fat with heart disease. And yet this study was suppressed, so the story goes, because it didn't support the hypothesis of Ansel Keys. And the study was a blinded, randomized control trial considered the gold standard of evidence conducted at a unique point in history when you could pull off a trial like that on humans in the 60s. Ugh, I was hoping I would never have to discuss this trial because it takes me to a very dark place. It was conducted in six mental institutions and a nursing home. It turns out my beautiful mom, whom I adored, was struck with schizophrenia at 35 and confined to a mental hospital over and over. My mom and I lived for years on the streets of Oakland when I should have been going to elementary school. You wouldn't think it could happen to a child or to a woman who got a master's degree in organic chemistry from Cornell, but it happened to us. I gave a TEDx talk about it that wrecked me for a while, and if you'd like to know more, I'll link it in the description. I will never get over the tragedy that befell my mom, but I mention it because I think it gives me unique perspective on this study. But let's cheer up and see a couple animals. Oh look, there's a cute little coyote. Well, hello guys, you wanna come over and say hi? I bet you boys caused the lady turkeys to swoon. I believe one of the best things we can do to understand nutrition is to understand just a few simple things about how studies are designed. Otherwise, it's like driving through a thick fog. The first thing is that chronic diseases take a long time to develop, 20 years or more. And so studies have to be designed with that in mind. You can smoke for 20 years and look and feel great the whole time. Studies that involve mortalities and endpoint are the hardest because you have to track a large number of people for a very long time and know why they died. That makes randomized control trials the gold standard for short-term studies almost impossible for long-term studies. You can't find a large group of people who are willing to change their diet and stick to it for the rest of their lives for your 50-year study. You can do that with drugs because people are willing to take a pill for the rest of their lives like a statin. No one should take that to mean that you can't do great dietary studies on all-cause mortality over the decades because we have at least a dozen great ones, including the one that helped us unravel the fact that smoking is unhealthy. Some of you are ready to comment that smoking is easier to study than diet is because it's not distributed among all our foods. Fair point. But we have other examples like trans fats where it took long-term studies to unravel the health effects and we had no long-term randomized control trials to help us with that either. The second thing that helps immensely is when the study cohort, a fancy name for study participants, have several things in common to reduce confusing variables. For example, two of Harvard studies involve nurses which have similar socioeconomic backgrounds which is a major determinant of health. That's what makes studies of populations like hunter-gatherers so difficult. It's hard to find enough of them to get good statistics. Their genetics and lifestyles are quite different than ours. Plus, they have a lot of survivorship bias because they were able to survive childbirth and infections and accidents without the medical care that most Western countries have. The Minnesota coronary experiment seemed like a great idea. They had a great team, they had a lot of money, and they put a lot of effort into the experimental design. They fed one set of patients high levels of corn oil by infusing their meat, milk, and cheese with it and removing some of the saturated fat from those foods. They replaced butter in the diet with a special soft margarine, which they probably didn't realize at the time had a form of trans fat, which was pretty damaging. But tragically, this study ran into the problem of cohort selection. They were in and out of the hospital, on and off the program, and struggling with cigarettes and alcohol and depression, which I know all too well about this cohort. I spoke to a great scientist who is very familiar with this study because he was there at the University of Minnesota at that time. 
also working under Ansel Keys on diet heart studies. It's Henry Blackburn. He's 97 and still publishing and looks great. Here's a photo he sent me last week of him holding his great grandson. Last fall, we were communicating while he was out on his ski boat. He said factors outside the control of the investigators prevented them from getting meaningful results. He said one of the factors was the deinstitutionalization of the mentally ill at that time, a factor which I know all too well because that's how I ended up on the streets with my mom. The lead researcher on this paper gave an interview just before his death, and he said, I didn't really start to feed the special diets until after the end of that three-year feasibility study, and that was fatal to the project because during that time, these psychiatric drugs were developed and the patients were getting discharged right and left from these mental hospitals. That prevented me from getting a definitive answer. Dr. France eventually did publish about the study in 1989, and here it is. He said the average length of each hospital stay was 292 days. The average total time in the hospital was 384 days. He also bemoaned the fact that accidents and suicides confounded the data because biopsies didn't always reveal the cause of death. That's something I also know all too well because I lived with the wonderful mentally ill on the streets for so many years. And they suffer more than anyone should have to suffer. Henry is very strict with me about what I can and can't conclude from a study, which is one of the things I love about him. We both admire Dr. Franz for not trying to torture his data and try to squeeze out uncertain conclusions, but Henry was pretty distraught that this has become the subject of conspiracies 50 years later. There were two papers published in the British Medical Journal after recovering some of the raw data Dr. Franz kept in his basement. One took the point of view it was a good study on the basis that it was a randomized control trial and because it brought into question the diet heart hypothesis since more people died in the corn oil group than on their normal diet. The other paper observed that the data also showed fewer people died who had high blood pressure and who smoked. That paper also observed that only 595 participants were studied for more than a year and 83% of the control group was lost to follow up so we're not actually sure how many of them died. As I listen to people who are so certain this trial was definitive because it contained the words randomized trial, a thought kept coming to my mind. I'll let these two weightlifting doctors say it because they seem to be very knowledgeable. So what I'm getting at is like actual professionals and experts in the field are not arguing about this. It's only like the seed oil conspiracy theorists. 